All right, here we go. Systems of Equations test, SAT. We got 10 questions here. Try to throw everything at you. Easy ones, hard ones, no solution, infinite solution, word problems, the whole deal. So here we go. Number one, uh, nice little system set up. Since it's already solved for x equals 2, I'm going to use substitution. I'm going to plug that in here. Get 3 times 2 added to y equals 29. So 6 plus y is 29, minus 6 from both sides. Looks like y should be 23, and that's what we're after, the value of y. Moving on down, number 2, we have a word problem, although I don't think you have to use system of equations. Um, we could. So pizza slices for $4 each, so $4 times every pizza slice. We have calzones for 5 bucks a piece. $5 times the calzone. So this is our money equation. And the group of kids spent 83 bucks. And then it says they bought 11 calzones. So they tell us that the C is 11. So if you set it up with a system, you could pretty much just substitute it in. Do 4P plus 55 equals 83 minus the 55 from both sides. And you will get 4p equals 28. Divide, divide. And it looks like pizza comes out to be 7 slices. Now, you also could have just, it's kind of the same math, but you could have did 11 calzones at 5 bucks a pop. was $55. Subtract that from the 83 they spent, and you'd realize you have $28 left for the pizza. And then do that 28 divided by $4 a slice would have also give you seven slices. So didn't really have to do system of equations there. All right, number three, this one is set up classic for uh, elimination. The big thing you're looking for is opposite coefficients. We already have it. So let's add these together. X's get eliminated. I get 2Y equals 12. So it looks like Y equals 6. That one was over before it even started. Number four, this one is set up almost to be eliminated. Uh, if you like subtraction, you could do it. I've been kind of having you guys not do subtraction because we make a lot of mistakes with integers. So I'm going to multiply this row by negative one. And that's going to give me negative. It's just going to change all the signs. It's going to negate everything. Bottom equation, I'm going to leave alone. Like I say, you didn't have to do that first step, but I like to add here. It just less mistakes. Eliminate. Be careful with your math. Divide, divide. And you get y equals negative 1, which come out to be a for that one. All right, moving on down. Number 5. Another one looks good for elimination. Um, I think I could turn that 2 into a negative 8 to get my opposites that I want. That's always my goal. So negative 8x minus 36y, positive 60. Over here I get positive 8x, positive 4y, negative 28. Didn't do anything with that one. Add them up. Eliminate those x's. Negative 32y equals negative 32. Divide, divide. y equals positive 1. But they don't want y. They want the value of x. Um, so I need to now take this 1, plug it in. Maybe this one, I don't know, it doesn't matter. 2x plus 9 times 1 equals negative 15. Minus 9 minus 9 is negative 24. x equals negative 12. I think I did something wrong here. Crap, I did do something wrong. Check that. Everything was really good until I got to this point. Positive 60 plus a negative 20 is a positive 32. So that's going to make y equal to negative 1. All right. Now we got to go back and we got to plug negative 1 in here. So we got to go. 2x 
minus 9 equals negative 15. Add 9 to both sides. Add 9, add 9, we get negative 6. So we get x equals negative 3. All right, that seems a little bit better. Mental math was losing me there. Number 6, this is a tougher elimination. I can't multiply 2 by something to get 3, and I can't multiply negative 2 by something there. So I need to multiply both rows. I'm going to try to get negative 6s in the front. Um, so let's just do this, and let's go times this row by 2. We'll times this row by 3, and I'll get 6x minus 4y negative 8. I'll get negative 6x plus 9y equals 27. Now we can eliminate x's. I get 5y equals 19, which makes me a little bit nervous because we normally don't get decimals. But I'm going to show you a shortcut here at the end that I didn't see. So that's going to be 3.8. I now have to plug that 3.8 in because they want to know what the answer x plus y added together is. You know, I now have the y, but we need to go figure out what the x is. So 3x minus 2 times 3.8 equals negative 4. So that's 3x minus 6 and 1.6 is negative 7.6. Add 7.6 to both sides and divide both sides by 3 and we get x is 1.2. Now we can add 1.2 plus 3.8 and we get a nice little answer of 5. Now a little trick that I've seen on some problems, some, some of these SAT problems, Whenever they want you to do this manipulate answers, is what I'm calling it, sometimes, instead of using elimination, if I would have just added these two equations together, nothing would get eliminated. But look what I find out. I find out x plus y equals 5. And the answer just fell in my lap. So keep an eye out for something like that. It's kind of a little, little something something they do to try to reward you for seeing a shortcut. All right, number seven. This one says system of equations. It's a little harder because we have a missing constant, a missing number, uh, but we want no solution. So a couple things about no solution we need to remember. Number one is if we graph them, no solution is two parallel lines that never cross. They don't have an intersection point. Basically, they have the same slope, different y-intercepts. Now, algebraically, what we need is we need to cancel out all x's and y's, but we don't want to cancel out our numbers. So we want this side to cancel, but we want this side to not cancel. I'll show you what I mean when we do this. So let's try to get things to cancel. If I put a 2 in there, my x's are going to cancel. My y's are going to cancel, and I get 16. So ultimately, I end up with 0 equals 16, which is a false statement. And that means this problem, there's no solution. So the correct answer was A needed to be a 2. Now, I want you to contrast this with what's about to happen in number 8. Because in number 8, it's a little different story. Similar, but yet different. This one, we want to get an infinite number of solutions. And they will have, we have two of these letters to kind of deal with. Well, infinite's a little different. To get infinite solutions, when you graph it, it's actually the same line just right on top of itself. So we want everything to cancel. We want to basically get a cancel cancel when you're doing these infinite solutions. So, you know, don't worry about canceling these yet, okay? Let's worry about this one. This is what we need to make cancel. So I'm going to try to get that top to be a negative 6. So I'm going to multiply that whole top row by a negative 3. And I have negative 3ax. Negative 3 times a negative c is a positive 3cy. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Bottom, don't monkey with. Everything looks good. And... I now have achieved my goal of the, the right-hand side. I get my zero. 
Okay, I didn't need to worry about that with no solution. I do with infinite. Now I need to get this to be a negative 9 to cancel with that positive 9. So when is that going to be negative 9? Well, when you divide both sides, we find out that a equals 3. Well, now t we need this to be a negative 6 to cancel out with that positive 6. So c's got to be negative 2. So we put that right here. And the final answer is 1. I don't really see of any other clever way to do that. If you guys come up with something, leave a comment or tell me about it. Number 9, this is a pretty easy one here. I already answered this earlier on number 7. Which of the following shows a system with no solution? Well, that is going to be this one right here. Answer A. This would be one solution. This one would be infinite solutions. And this one that we can't really see, it's actually got a parabola and a line. So that might be where maybe you have like a linear equation coupled with a quadratic. You know, I'm just making crap up, but maybe something like that. That's where you could end up with two solutions there. And finally, the extra credit. Had to throw one with some fractions on there um, just to show you how to clear those out. So we have 1 half x plus 1 half y equals 6. Negative 2 thirds x plus 1 third y equals 2. So you clear for fractions by multiplying by the least common denominator for each row. So in the top, it's kind of nice because they're both 2s. So I'm going to times everybody by 2. And my new equation is just going to be x plus y equals 12. On the bottom, they're both 3s. So I'm going to multiply everybody by 3, or buddy. And I get negative 2x um, plus y equals 6. What do we want here? We want the value of y. So I think I'm going to try to eliminate x. If I want y, I like to eliminate the other letter. So let's eliminate x. I think if I multiply this whole top row here by 2, that will give me 2x, 2y, and then the 12 will be a 24. And now we can eliminate our x's. We add them up. We get 3y equals 30. So y equals 10. That was your extra credit problem. So there, really quick little test. Hopefully you got all 10 of them right. If not, you found out what you did wrong, so you can do better next time. See you.